Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about my favorite eye products. Uh, mostly my eyeshadows, but there is the mascaras and primers and everything good that goes along with makeup. So I guess we should start with what you would want to do to frame your face first and that's always your eyebrows. I have one eyebrow product that I use religiously and that is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. I like it because it has a small tip and a great spoolie at the end and it seems to be the perfect color match for me. It I use mine in brunette but they have lots of different ones. It's been compared to the Anastasia Brow Wiz, which I haven't used, but I don't know that I would even try to purchase it because this has been compared to it. I have tried the NYX one and I didn't care for it as much, even though a lot of YouTubers are also saying that is a great dupe for the Anastasia Brow Wiz. Next, move on to primers, and I have one primer that is my tried and true, I've been using it, I've tried, I believe it was the Benefit or the Too Faced primer, but I always go back to this one, it's a Mary Kay Eye Primer. It just gives a nice finish so that your eyeshadow doesn't crease. It's a creamy, <clears throat> a cream consistency, so it's not covering up any lines, discoloration on your eyelids. It just shears right out. Next, my other product I like to use to prime is the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. This is, I believe, the only MAC eye product I own. I think I tried some eyeshadows once and I didn't really care for them but they weren't the singles and I probably will start to collect some MAC singles because now they've lowered their price so they're closer to Makeup Geek consistency but I know a lot of Makeup Geek eyeshadows are dupes for them for instance I think Shimmer Shimmer and Nylon are close proximity don't quote me on that because I have never used the MAC ones. Next eye products I'm going to talk about and this is where it gets because I have a lot is eyeshadows. I should state that I will repurchase the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. Hands down the best primer keeps color at bay, make sure eyeshadows stay in place. So this is just a few singles that I have. I've pulled out of my palettes. The top round ones are Makeup Geek and this is not all of my Makeup Geek. I actually have three palettes of Makeup Geek, two of the large size Z palettes and one extra large Z palette. I just pulled out my favorites for purposes of this video. So I'll start with these rectangular ones at the bottom. These are Mary Kay singles. Mary Kay are $9, I believe, for one pan. They're good. They're not as good as the Makeup Geek, in my opinion. But the ones I have here could be considered comparable. So on this side, is Chris Line. This one's been in their collection for years and years. I can't remember a time when Mary Kay didn't have this one in their collection. The next one is Ballerina Pink, which is a nice light pink all over shade. Next, I have Spun Silk, which is a great crease color. It's also been in the Mary Kay line for as long as Crystalline. And the one next to it 
is Truffle, which is another Mary Kay color that's been around forever. Then you have Hazelnut, yet another uh, long time one. Midnight Blue, this is probably my favorite blue. I like to use it with the Ballerina Pink. It's When I use blue, I rarely use more than two colors. It's usually a matte pink and a blue or a matte white and the blue. And I just blow it out into the crease because of my eye color. I don't think that I can pull off a vibrant blue eye look. And the last one here is Sweet Plum which is a nice shimmery deep plum color. So here we have Crystalline which could be compared to Shimma Shimma but Shimma Shimma is a bit pinkier. This is more of a champagne-y color. Next is the Pink Ballerina. Next to that is Spun Silk which you can't see which is why it's a great transition color. And then that one is Truffle, which is a nice dark. It has some shimmer. I don't know if you can tell, but it does have some shimmer. Then we have Hazelnut here, Midnight Star, and Sweet Plum. They're all really nice. They're easy to blend. But they're not as creamy, I'd say, as the Makeup Geek. And you could pan these quite a bit easier than you could the Makeup Geek. I think because they are a bit powdery. I don't recall them being as powdery before they changed to the mineral formulation. So that might be part of the problem. Next on to my Makeup Geek, this one, my favorite, favorite, favorite Makeup Geek eyeshadow. In fact, I've already got a backup of it because this is the one I think I'll fall up, I will run out of, and that's Shimmer Shimmer. I like to use this one as a brow highlight or even just a dark color on the outside corner of my eye and then Shimmer Shimmer the, on the lid. Next one is baby face which I don't hear a, a lot of youtubers talking about which surprises me because I think it's a great transition color next to that I have bitten which I like just because it's a red shade I never thought I'd wear a ready color shade but there you go next to that is drama queen which forgive me I dropped it, it shattered. I will have to repurchase another one because I use this quite often on the outer corner instead of a dark brown or a black. And next to that is Burlesque, which is so, so pretty. If I was to do a smoky, I think that would be what I would base it on just because. Look at that. So, so pretty. I have a duochrome and phantom, which I'm wearing on my eyes today. I love the transition of colors because it's pink and purple and some gold in there. Next to it is a foil and that's whimsical. And then Right next to that one is Starry Eyed. And those are my two favorite foiled shadows. I do have way more of the foiled shadows. And I think I have almost all of the duochrome. Underneath, I have Confection, which is another great transition color in the crease 
and then sorbet again very nice transition color and these are ones that I don't hear a lot of youtubers talking about but I feel that they make great transition colors and then my second favorite blue is Nautica and this one it's from their matte collection but it has shimmer to it so I'm not sure that I'd call it matte but again love that with just a nice pink or a white in the on the lid and then that throughout the crease and up the outer corner next I have some ColourPop colors and I have half an Alex drawer full of ColourPop colors and more on the way they have their spring collection which I can't wait to try but a few of my favorites are Coppa Feel Party Girl and Maidens. Look at that. I believe this one might have been in their Christmas collections. And they were had tons and tons and tons of collections coming out. When I want a nice sparkly color, it's usually ColourPop that I go for just because they are so sparkly. So this one is Eye Candy. If you can see that or not. Lighting in here is horrible. But it's a nice pink sparkle. And when I say sparkle, I want sparkle. <laughs> and Valley Girl. Which has a nice yellowy gold champagne feel to it. Supermodel, which is more of a true gold color, which I don't wear a lot of gold, but if I do, it's going to be a ColourPop gold. I just feel that they suit my skin tone better. Is a product that I use by itself if I just want really quick eye look. And these are Unique Splurge and this one is in Noble. These are kind of cushiony gel type eye color why I like them for just doing them as a color on my eyelid is because you can spread it out so it can be darker on the lid and then just lighten it up towards the eyebrow very nice they don't move um, there's only a few unique products I do use and I would continue to purchase these over and over again I have a few eye palettes here that are go-to's constantly we are on the makeup geek and I didn't even mention one of my favorite eye palettes and I'm sure everybody knows this one is the Manny MUA I love this palette and it's for one color this one right here that has got to be the reddest eyeshadow I have ever seen and I absolutely love it. The Insomnia that they have is a pressed pigment. I actually have the loose pigment so 
it was a win-win with this palette but all the colors in this were so beautiful and I was going to put it in a favorites video a Friday favorites video but I had bought in two because I had gotten one for my daughter for her birthday so I couldn't really let on that I already had this probably one of my favorite neutral palettes the Tartlets in Bloom. This is a great neutral eye palette. I didn't even think that I would like this palette and I kept looking at and looking at and looking at and what do you know I fell in love with it. I probably use it at least twice a week just because you can get such great neutral looks and where I work you're not going to be doing a bold eye look I'm working in an office in a gas station it's just not going to go next just so you don't think I'm all about the higher priced items this is the CoverGirl Roses palette I love this palette I can do such a great neutral look with this or you can go and do something more dramatic with these darker shades in here they're a little bit powdery but easily blendable I didn't care for the goldens in this they were really powdery hard to blend the nudes is okay but this one I've reached for several times and I think it is a good dupe for some of the I think it's a Naked 3 palette that has all the pinks in it this is a great dupe for that I have some elf palettes this one is a prism eyeshadow palette the reason why I bought this is I think it was young wild and polished had mentioned how these are quite a lot like the foiled eyeshadows from Makeup Geek and I have to agree with her the color payoff on these is really really good and for the price I mean it's cheaper than buying six Makeup Geek shadows plus a palette to put in two of their other palettes this one is Nude Rose Gold which is similar to the roses in the CoverGirl palette and these as well there's some that are eh but for the most part they're easy to blend you may have to work with them for a bit but I mean for the price of these you'd be a fool not to buy them so, the other one is the Mad for Matte and I know this one has been all over YouTube. This has probably been more hyped than any of the other drugstore palettes for being a dupe for some of the naked palettes. This I was so shocked by the color payoff, the pigment and how well these blend. I will bring this one with me or this one with me when I travel just because I have such a great selection for different looks. My last eyeshadow palette and I think this is a must for everybody um, if it's just even as a diet aid the chocolate bar palette I do have the Bon Bon palette but I think I reach for this one more than I do the Bon Bon palette just because it's got more neutral colors and mm, it smells so much like chocolate love this palette and I like the fact that this is in a metal tin whereas a lot of the other palettes they're not in as sturdy a tin. This is like a good weight tin. You don't have to worry about it breaking if you travel with it. 
whereas you might with the e.l.f. palettes. I usually am pretty careful about how I pack any of my... I forgot to mention, I do use the L'Oreal Brow Stylist for my brows, but I use the Mary Kay Brow Gel for setting it. I like it because it's just a clear gel. It doesn't get crunchy and hard. It just holds your hairs in place. I don't think I've ever come across another one. I had an e.l.f. one and it wasn't as good as this. And I prefer the clear over the tinted brow gels. And I have some eyeliners. Hands down favorite eyeliner for in my waterline is the Rimmel Scandalous in the color, I believe it's just nude, is from ColourPop. And I love all the ColourPop eyeliners. Although I have found, and I've seen this a few times on other people when they've mentioned the ColourPop liners, they all seem to break. So they come down. So you have to be really careful when you're using it that you've only got a little bit of product out. This one's Call Me. And this is the one I probably reach for most often if I'm using this kind of liner. And it's just a brown color. I do have the gel pot too, but I don't find I reach for the gel pots as much. If I'm going to reach for a gel eyeliner, it's always the Mary Kay. And this one is so black. I'm wearing it on my eyelids, uh, on my lash line today. Um, I could see why other people wouldn't like this. I don't have a problem with it transferring, but it is very, very soft. Like, it's a gel. It's not like your normal eyeliner pots it's very very soft you need so little of it and I think that if you have really hooded eyes you'd probably get a lot of transfer on the upper lid mascaras and primers favorite primer the Avon lash and condition primer I've tried Mary Kay one and I don't care for it as much as I like this one. This one leaves my lashes soft whereas the Mary Kay one kind of hardens them. Not that that's not good if you want your mascara to stay in place but I don't like that they're so hard and the Avon one's cheaper so. My favorite everyday mascara and I think I've talked about this before is the Avon extended winged out mascara and this is just it gives you lengthening and fans out your lashes if you're looking for a thickening one there are other ones through Avon that do do that but I don't necessarily want thick lashes every time and if I do I'm reaching for the Too Faced Better Than Sex one and as you can see the brush on this one is much larger so you do get that thickening um, I have a Mary Kay one that I like for length too but I don't particularly care for the wand because it has plastic spikes so it feels like you're poking your eyelid when you're putting it on. I guess that's everything. Thanks for watching my video. If you haven't yet, subscribe below and click thumbs up. Thank you.